seat earlier and uh, I'm an actor from London in England. Um, but I also do uh, other things. Uh, I'm a voice artist, I do uh, recordings in sound studios. And um, I also uh, translate, I speak uh, Spanish, French, and German. And I'm going to speak today about a book. A very interesting book that I've just translated from German into English uh, about the Rolling Stones, uh, 50 Years of the Rolling Stones Life by Sebastian Haas, uh, which you can find online. And um, we're going to be talking about that because it's a very interesting subject and a very interesting band. Obviously, there have been lots and lots of books over the years about the Rolling Stones. Uh, you know, we've been going for 50 years. But what I found particularly interesting about this book, Sebastian Hass's book, um, was that, um, I mean, I know the story pretty well anyway, because I lived through most of the period that, uh, that it deals with, 60s and 70s and so on. But, uh, and, and so I'm quite familiar with the story, you know, the, the particular all of the so-called negative stuff, the drugs, busts, and uh, drug use, and uh, sex scandals, and so forth, and partying, and all that sort of excess in it. Um, but so many books tend to get bogged down in that, because they know that people like to read about it. They were all fascinated by sex scandals, and, and drug abuse, and so on. You know, it catches the headlines of, of the daily papers without any problem at all. Um, so I was over familiar with all of that. What was interesting about Sebastian Hass's book was that um, that was in there, of course it was mentioned, but the, the, what the actor calls, or people like myself who come from the theatre of the film, uh, the through line of action, in other words, the storyline, it, it's, it's, is um, about the band that, be, that have stayed together somehow and survived for 50 years, you know, for half a century. A rock, a rock and roll band, I mean, that's extraordinary. And he, uh, Sebastian Hass, he never allows that to get lost. So you'd find out what happened along the way, you know, and obviously that was to do with uh, relationship, bust-ups, drugs, sex and so forth. Sex and drugs and rock and roll, you know. That's there, but he never allows the train to get off the track, you know. It stays on there year by year by year, and the next tour, and the next tour. And it's very, very detailed, um, each tour, where they went, what happened there, so forth. The set that they played, which songs they played, if there was a riot or not, or whatever. And that is what was interesting to me, because um, that sort of makes it crystal clear that uh, it's like a family that somehow stayed together for half a century. Um, but the, um, the most notable thing, I suppose, about the Rolling Stones is they're a live band, and that's the title of the book, you know, 50 Years on Tour Live, the Rolling Stones Live. And um, somebody once asked Mick Jagger back in the, I don't know, 70s or something, um, after the Beatles had broken up, what he thought the difference between the Beatles and the Rolling Stones was. And he said, I think quite rightly, that um, the Beatles were a studio band and they did their best work without a doubt in the studio recording. Whereas, uh, Jack said, uh, for him, the Rolling Stones was always a, ba a, a band about live performance. And I think that hits the nail on the head. You know, they are uh, at their best, you know, the greatest rock and roll band in the world, and that's about live performance. So, it's a little bit like the difference between an actor working in the theatre and an actor working in the movies. Um, it's just a different game, if you like, a different uh, uh, environment. And, uh, so I think Jack hit the nail on the head when he said that. And that, that's the real virtue, I think, of this book is uh, uh, Sebastian has keeps that in mind from page one right the way to the very end, to the last page. And you never lose track of that. And, and, and so reading it, my admiration for the band just sort of grew and grew and grew. It's always been my favourite band. But, but when I started to see uh, how enormous this achievement is that they have been touring, playing live and, uh, for so many years, um, it gets right to the core, I think, of, of what the value, the remarkable value of uh, the Rolling Stones really is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, this is quite a nice little story, quite a funny thing. Uh, I think it was 1966, uh, and they, the, the Stones were in France, and I think they were in Paris, and they played a gig there, and, um, and 
afterwards they met uh, Brigitte Bardot. She walked in with, uh, I think, six men or something. Uh, and everybody was, you know, just fascinated by her. It was all gaga. And, um, of course, uh, Mick Jagger turned his stuff on, you know, and I think uh, he, uh, he actually got off with Bardot and spent the night with him at the end of the, end of the evening. And, uh, of course, the next day they carried on touring. They, they wound up in, I think, went from Paris to Marseille or something like that. The, the following day, of course, the rest of the, the, the Rolling Stones weren't too happy that Mick Jagger got off with uh, Bridget Bardot, but they hadn't, you know, Brian Jones hadn't, King Richards hadn't. <laughs> it was Jagger that won the day, and of course they went down to, uh, to Marseille the next day, I think, and played the gig there, right in the middle of the gig. Um, uh, somebody in the audience had broken a chair or something, they threw a piece of the chair at the stage, and of course he hit Mick Jagger right in the forehead. Yeah. When it happened, just as he was singing, I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> so, and that, uh, that tickled the rest of the band. They kind of, they enjoyed the irony of the fact that Jacob was the one who got off the night before with Bridget Bardot, and now he's singing, I can't get no satisfaction. And uh, at that precise moment, somebody threw a piece of wood and hit him on the head, and that amused the rest of them enormously. So, poetic uh, justice. Um, yes, Mick Taylor. Um, I've always loved uh, Mick Taylor's guitar work with the Stone. You know, when he joined uh, in 1969, those like, albums that followed, you know, he played in Remarkable, um, Sticky Fingers, and so on. Excellent, um, actually. And if you think about it, he was just a kid, really, when they, when they sort of picked him up at 21, I think he was. And the next thing we knew, he was playing in front of 200,000 people at Hyde Park. And, you know, just sort of, just in commemoration of Brian Jones, which is crowning, it's really cool. Um, sort of baptism of fire, if you like. And, uh, and uh, he, um, at the time, when he was 21, when he joined the band, he was a sort of, I think he was a vegan or something, and uh, very cared about what he ate, by it, by other foods and so forth. And within a few years, you know, when he finally left, the band, um, he was a heroin addict, and, uh, and said something like, that. if he'd stayed in the road, he probably would have died, he probably wouldn't have survived. So he went off on his own, and uh, because he um, uh, had had a dispute with Mick uh, 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 and Keith Richards about the uh, songwriting uh, credits to the music, which he, f and he felt he had, that, that he, he said something like, no, He'd been promised that he would be mentioned for the contribution that he'd made, but it wasn't. It was always Jack Richards when the uh, stuff was released, you know. And so he went off to do his own thing, um, which unfortunately didn't work out, and it just fell in complete obscurity. Nobody heard about it for years and years and years. So now they brought him back into the fold for the anniversary, which I think is a lovely gesture, um, uh, because, uh, as Keith Richards put it, I think uh, they're all stones, you know. They're, Everybody who has played with the band at one point or another is somehow part of the band, you know, even years later. And so it's lovely to see uh, Mick Taylor back there, and, and especially the response he got from the audience. I think it was great, you know. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I'd just like to highly recommend the book. Um, it's well worth reading. You can find it on Amazon, you can find it on Kindle. Um, and um, I think I've worked on it for about two months, all told. Um, and um, it was a wonderful job. I mean, I wasn't bored for a moment. Uh, uh, it was really fascinating. It's a great story, I mean, because of that saying. Um, it's very, very well told in this instance. Um, so, uh, yes, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's well worth reading. I worked on it for two months, as I say, um, translating from German to English, and I was never bored for a moment. So. Um, and um, one other thing to add, I suppose, about my work, um, I'm an actor, uh, also a native speaking voice artist, as they call it, um, translator from German, Spanish, and French into English, and also an English teacher. Um, I teach business English, I have some, um, uh, a lot of students. I teaching this in foreign language. Um, so my website for my translation work and my English teaching work, everything to do with the English language, um, is 
um, actenglish.de and we can find all my details um, and my uh, acting website is simply uh, my name is Steve Perry, one word, dot com. Um, and I'd just like to take one little thing to close um, which is this uh, for me an actor is not uh, I don't think of an actor as an artist an actor is an interpreter and the, uh, the artist is the writer, whether it's somebody who's written a play for the theatre or written a film script in the movie. And um, the same applies to a translator. A translator is, uh, is also um, an interpreter. And, uh, but the artist is the person who's written the book, the writer. So for me, um, you know, acting somebody's script in the theatre or in the movies, uh, or translating somebody's language, the, the, the book that they've written, into English. It's the same thing. Um, and so, you know, in both instances, when one has an opportunity to work on something which is valuable, well, um,